Ouchie. Tears of the Kingdom was nominated for Game of the Year at the Game Awards this year, and it didn't win, but that's still really, really cool, and series producer A.G. Aonuma has been doing the rounds, doing a whole new slew of interviews to commemorate the occasion. Lots of interesting little tidbits have been coming out of these interviews. The next game won't be a direct sequel to Tears of the Kingdom, so now we know that. He says maybe to the idea of playable Zelda sometime down the line. A pretty hard maybe, but still a maybe. But today I read an interview that didn't really sit well with me. When asked about the idea of someday returning to a more linear structure akin to the older games, he had this to say. It's interesting when I hear people say they want more linear Zelda because I'm wondering, why do you want to go back to a type of game where you're more limited or more restricted in the types of things or ways you can play? But I do understand that desire that we have for nostalgia, and so I can also understand it from that aspect. Sorry to move away from the quote so quickly, but I wanted to plant it in your head, then cover some other stuff before we swing back around to it. To get this out of the way first, as usual, just in case anyone watching this is new to the channel, I love me some Breath of the Wild. I love open world Zelda. I feel like open world Zelda is a breath of fresh air, an amazing new experience. Breath of the Wild was one of the most special games I've ever played, yada yada yada, on and on, cue accolades trailer, tens across the board. But I recognize that it's not for everyone, and it's such a dramatic departure from the usual Zelda formula that it's alienating a pretty huge chunk of the fan base. This has been an ongoing discussion. What direction Zelda could and should go after Tears of the Kingdom is a bigger discussion for another day, but I'll say that the topic is extremely nuanced with so many variables to consider. And despite loving the open world thing, I've always felt that striking a better balance between old and new should be the number one goal moving forward. And going into Tears of the Kingdom, I had two major concerns. One, did it fix the design issues I had with the first game? And two, did it work to better satisfy fans who were let down by Breath of the Wild. While I'm still working out exactly how I feel about Tears of the Kingdom, also a bigger discussion for another day, I feel like I can pretty confidently say that as far as fixing design issues goes, the game does succeed to a decent degree. But providing more stuff for the traditional Zelda-loving fans? No. No, it, it just doesn't. Which is weird, because the primary issue is the dungeons. The dungeons in Breath of the Wild were more open-ended, less tightly designed. And this is what Aonuma has to say about Tears of the Kingdom's dungeons. But then we did hear the desire from fans for a bit more of a designed dungeon, and that led to our approach to dungeons for Tears of the Kingdom. And so as we proceed, whenever we're making a game, we look back at our past and then consider where we are now with the freedom that we give to the player in these games. I know he made the game, but, um, did, uh, did, did me and him play the same game? <laughs> These dungeons are not more tightly designed. I, I, I mean, maybe some? A little? The fire one is pretty interesting. It takes some work to get around, but the water one, you, you literally just run over here, do a thing, run over here, do a thing, run over here, do a thing, fight the boss. <laughs> This game has the really cool element where getting to the dungeon is like part of the dungeon. I really like that, but the dungeons themselves, I, they don't feel like an improvement. They are not more tightly designed. The Divine Beasts, those felt way tighter. They had the moving parts you had to manipulate all the time. They were way more puzzle boxy. Full disclosure, I still haven't beaten Tears of the Kingdom and maybe the last one or two dungeons I need to do will sway my opinion, but so far I, genuinely don't know what he's talking about. And because the dungeons haven't really been improved, the game hasn't really helped bridge that gap between players, which is really disappointing. I wholeheartedly believe that the Zelda team can have their cake and eat it too. It is possible to deliver an experience that makes both sides relatively happy. They can have their big, experimenty open world and their more tightly designed sequences. There's no pleasing literally everyone, but they can do a lot better than this. Okay, so now let's get back to that quote by Onuma. Why do you want to go back to a type of game where you're more limited or more restricted in the types of things or ways you can play? But I do understand that desire that we have for nostalgia, and so I can also understand it from that aspect. I don't know about you, but that's rough. That, that, that's really rough. I am extremely interested in game design. I would say I am 
passionate about it. The subject fascinates the heck out of me. These discussions about how to balance mechanics and whatnot to please the most players, I, I just love it. And even though I love open world Zelda, it is not difficult to see that with everything new that's been gained, so much has been lost. Intricate, tightly designed dungeons are Zelda's identity. Exploration, that's also huge. The very first game was all about wandering, discovering, and in that way, the new games hit the mark more so than ever. But the design itself, that's also so, so important. I might as go as far as to say that those are the two major supporting pillars the series has been built on. Exploration and intricate, purposeful design. That feeling of walking into a dungeon, one giant puzzle box, then slowly working through it, coming to grips with its themes, uncovering its secrets, discovering all its little tricks, then finally beating that boss at the end. That's, that's Zelda magic right there. It's a lightning bolt of dopamine. It's something that very few games achieve. Even in an industry where games all copy each other, and indies in particular are excelling at giving their own takes on classic formulas, very few people are making dungeons quite like Zelda used to do it. Because designing a dungeon like that is hard. It's extremely complicated, but it's always worth it in the end. It's what makes all the these decades of Zelda games so special. The question Aonuma posed in this interview was probably meant to be rhetorical, but I'll answer it anyway. Why do we want to go back to a type of game where we're more limited or more restricted in the types of things we can do or ways we can play? Because freedom is not always the objectively best choice. It makes for an experience that's different, but not always better. Facing a problem with multiple solutions and solving it with my own unique solution can feel very good. The shrines in Tears of the Kingdom are are a lot of fun. But you know what feels less good? Facing a problem that looks like it's probably got loads of solutions, thinking I can probably see what I'm supposed to do, but then instantly cheesing the problem with an overly simple solution that cuts right to the chase. It's like facing an obstacle course and just walking around it directly to the end and still getting a prize. That feeling is rather deflating. And unfortunately, that's just something that comes with open-ended puzzles. You gain something, you lose something. Whereas linear puzzles, and indeed linear dungeons, those are problems that really need to be cracked. There is a huge satisfaction in figuring out what you have to do, in being led along through a sequence that has been expertly crafted to test you. But Aonuma can't see that? It's hard to believe he can't see it. He's an expert game designer. He's the Zelda guy, but we have to tell him that there is merit to both formats? That the formula he's been working with for 30 years is still good? Oh my gosh, and don't even get me started on the second part of his quote. To suggest that the only reason people still enjoy linear Zelda is because of nostalgia? Oh, oh. That hurts, man. I mean, he's breaking the first rule of Mature Disagreement 101. You have to acknowledge that different people like different things. You don't try to invalidate an opposing opinion simply because you don't share that opinion. But to suggest that some people prefer this other, completely different design style simply because of nostalgia? Because it's what they're used to? That is an overwhelmingly ignorant stance to take. I don't think you have to be an expert game designer to see that such a stance is objectively false. This new Zelda formula is almost completely different from what came before it. Clearly, they were doing something right with those old games, or Zelda wouldn't even be what it is today. New Zelda does not replace old Zelda. It is not just better. The two Zeldas are simply different. Again, why do we have to tell him that? That should be common knowledge. It's obvious. Anyone interested in game design can tell you that open world Zelda comes with trade-offs. Any fan can tell you that something has been lost. Go anywhere people are talking about Tears of the Kingdom and you will find so, so many people who miss old Zelda. Even at least just like to a degree. Even fans of Tears of the Kingdom admit 
they could have done a better job with the dungeons. This is not just a matter of the vocal minority clinging to nostalgia. Across the board, you will find people who are begging for at least some traditional linear design to make a return. But Aonuma, apparently, doesn't see that. He, he, he sees no value in the old formula when he's got the new one to work on. And here's, here's the thing about this. This is especially disappointing coming from him. It's no secret that I've got beef with some of the people at Nintendo. The company is full of geniuses, but a lot of them seem to be really disconnected from their fans and intent on following their flights of fancy even when facing huge criticism, sometimes doubling or even tripling down on bad ideas. But how Numa? He's always been one of the good ones in my eyes. There's a lot to like about Skyward Sword, especially now that the Switch version has smoothed over so many problems, but when it first came out, it felt like the series had really lost its way. It was too linear. Exploration was practically non-existent. It held your hand every single step of the way like you were a baby. Honestly, the game scared me. I worried about the future of Zelda. But instead of doubling down and telling us we were wrong, we were too close-minded, like many Nintendo creatives have done, Aonuma took the game as a lesson of what not to do and rethought everything about Zelda. The result was Breath of the Wild, a fresh new start for the series, the polar opposite of Skyward Sword. Aonuma did not dig in his heels, he listened and he adapted. He used his exceptional design sense to reinvent the series. And I've really respected him for that. And of course, for all the years before Skyward Sword. Zelda is amazing. <laughs> Zelda's great. Plenty of the games have had their problems, lots of them thanks to development challenges and hard deadlines and whatnot, but most of them I love to pieces. It cannot possibly be overstated how much of an impact Ocarina of Time and Twilight Princess had on me. So to hear Aonuma himself belittle the classic formula and its fans? It hurts. It hurts. I, I feel like some of the trust he's built up with me has been broken. I'm not gonna automatically write him off completely, lump him in with the other Nintendo directors and producers I have problems with. But honestly, I might not be able to look at him the same again. His stance is simply too ignorant. And after hearing that he thinks he's solved the dungeon issue with Tears of the Kingdom, it's not that I'm scared for the future of Zelda. Whatever they make next, I'm sure it'll be really cool. You know, maybe even mind-blowing. I don't know. I'm sure I'll love it. But now I have less hope than ever that they'll eventually strike that perfect balance and bring together both sides of the fan base. Because apparently, that's not even a concern for them. It's not even something they want to do. Either that or they think they already did it, which is equally disturbing. And here's the real kicker. Nintendo used to give us a great mix of 3D Zelda and 2D Zelda. I've talked about this in plenty of videos before, but 3D Zelda focuses more on the feel, the sense of adventure, the scope, the action. 2D Zelda with its fixed perspective and grid-based format is best suited for that kind of classic tight Zelda design. 2D Zelda is linear Zelda at its best, its most expertly crafted. It would be so much easier to accept this new direction for 3D Zelda if Nintendo was still giving us 2D Zeldas. But for some reason, I simply cannot imagine they're just not. It has been a decade since the last original one. A significant amount of my life has gone by since they have given us one. And I, I no clue. No clue, I got nothing, I, I just, I don't get it. It's not like they don't sell. The Link's Awakening remake has sold over six million copies. Link Between Worlds sold over four million before that. Sure, it ain't 3D Zelda numbers, but considering the lower budgets inherent with the top-down format, that's probably still pretty darn good. For all we know, they'll reveal a new 2D Zelda tomorrow, yada yada. But it kind of seems like since merging their home console and handheld divisions, Nintendo has, I don't know, lost interest in 2D Zelda? They could have had smaller teams working on them this whole time. Even if each one took a humongous five years each, 
We could have had two by now. But no, Breath of the Wild and Tears of the Kingdom are the only new Zeldas we are allowed to have now, apparently. Even beyond the 3D games, Nintendo has got a chance to better satisfy both sides of their audience, and they just don't seem to wanna. Part of me wonders if literally all of this is pure sales numbers. Breath of the Wild and Tears of the Kingdom have sold so absurdly well that I guess it's no wonder Aonuma wants to continue with open world Zelda. I, I get that. It is a winning formula as far as broad appeal goes. But sales numbers aren't the only metric by which to judge your games. Again, you can have your cake and eat it too. Why not focus on making games that sell well and leave your longtime fans feeling happy, which as we know will also lead to even more sales. I'm desperately hoping Aonuma isn't just pointing at those massive figures and being like, see, proof's right there. This new thing is the right thing. The old thing was just less good. So yeah, I'm uh, I'm pretty bummed about this. <laughs> With just a few sentences, Aonuma managed to alter my view of him and the future of his series. But hey, you never know what'll happen. After Skyward Sword, he literally said that motion-controlled swordplay was the future of the series, and you can see how that turned out. That's the thing about genius auteur game designers. You never know where their flights of fancy will take them next. Well, thanks for watching. Let me know what you feel in the comments and all that stuff. Uh, now, if you'll excuse me, I'm gonna go finish Tears of the Kingdom. Probably. <laughs>